Good morning, Macarthur. In today's program, marriage equality, cosplay at Oran Park, empty election promises, smarter Macarthur on show, St Greg's Art Show returns with a bang, live music at George's, and more. Local cosplay enthusiasts brave the weather to show off their newest creations at the Oran Con 2 hosted by the Chocolate Room. A round of applause for cosplay shortened is actually costume play. Costume play! Costume play! <laughs> so costume play is really just getting into a costume whether it's made or bought and then just going out to wherever you want to go whether it's to do like a photo shoot or go to a convention or even just to make new friends. So I made everything myself. Um, some parts are actually a version 2, so it's a remake. It took about, easily about 100 hours overall. Hoof Lord, Hoof Lord Broker. I'm a very cuddly. Uh-uh, you're just gonna bite me. Aren't you scared of his teeth? Look, he looks like a vampire. Ah. Oh my God. We came up with this to try and support the local the local community, get the kids involved, you know, just make it a fun night. It was successful last year with the uh, markets, and so we decided to do another one this year, OrenCon 2. Oh my god, do you want to come up on stage? Don't bite me, okay? I'm gonna help you. Okay, don't bite me! Well, what I encourage a lot of beginner cosplayers to do, or people who are looking to get into cosplay, pick your most favourite character that you want to do. Captain Jack Randall from Outlander. Um, the Spider-Man in a different universe. It's very complicated. <laughs> it's an original cosplay, so it's one I've made up myself. I've made everything myself. Uh, without this particular gun, then it's a Meiji Uo Ronin uh, from the Japanese, Japan. Uh, with the gun, it's Neo Tokyo 2050 futuristic running. Oh my god, Harry Potter died and becomes Deadpool. So it's called Dead Potter. In my everyday life, I'm actually a full-time uni student studying health science to get into physiotherapy. And also, I'm a personal trainer and an assistant gym manager. Thank you everyone for coming. If you enjoy this event, we are going to do this next year all over again. And not to be outdone, a whole band of mini superheroes converged on the Wizard of Oz Funland for a superhero disco last Friday. Well, we all saw how Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull rushed hot on the heels of opposition leader Bill Shorten to promise $50 million to fix Appen Road. This is an election time. And during election time, they're likely to say anything. $50 million will not fix Appen Road. So what I'm asking the Prime Minister and, uh, and the opposition leader, tell me exactly what you hope to do with the $50 million. Anything that you're providing and saying at the moment, uh, is first of all a very frightful political announcement. We, the people of MacArthur, who use Appen Road, and I as a councillor, implore you to give us all the details. Let us know whether you have uh, spoken to the state government. It is a state road, uh, it is their responsibility. Uh, the $50 million that you're going to give, are you trying to include the developer's money? Well, the Section 94 developer's money is something that should be used for the people of Campbelltown to improve our parks, to, to get better infrastructure. Both the Prime Minister and the Opposition Leader have admitted that Appen Road is a killer road. By their own admission, we're now saying to them that you must act. You must stop all the killing. And there's only one way to do it, and that is to give dual lanes both north and south along Appen Road. Uh, the memorial behind me is one less we should have had. I'm just wondering who's going to take responsibility of the next death. St. Greg's College Annual Art Show made a comeback with a stunning array of works by local students and artists. 
The art show has been part of St Greg's for a number of years. What we tried to do this year was to encourage local artists along um, and because we wanted to represent the, the MacArthur area. The highlight of the exhibition was a painting of St Greg's by Daniel Mate Sullivan. It kind of includes uh, everything that, that we deemed significant for the school, um, past and present. The rugby league, the emblem, the chapel, the new hall. We've got an aerial view of St Greg's, the cattle grid, the front gates, which are really prominent. Uh, Marcel and Marcel and Marcel and that's oh, uh, um, oh. the one with the sleeves rolled up, you know, he's getting to work. The Rodeo, which used to be very significant many years ago, obviously the cattle. And then this piece here is actually taken out of the roof of the chapel. The college band set off the opening night where outstanding art students receive their awards. An artist himself, Campbelltown State MP Greg Warren, encouraged students with his presence. A lot of the boys here are very talented. They will do art up to year 10, and then they will stop doing it because they think it will damage their ATAR. Well, I have a number of boys here tonight who actually got band sixes in art, and their paintings are on display and they're outstanding, but they got ATARs of well over 94. So you can do art, and you can do very well with your ATAR to go on to university. I think young people initially are a little bit intimidated by art, or a blank canvas, for instance. Um, I think once they start, working and generally my experience in workshops is they um, build a lot of pride and uh, they surprise themselves, generally they surprise themselves and walk away with, with um, a sense of confidence that they never had when they first come in the, in the classroom. Behind the group, one of MacArthur's most popular dance companies is a love story that has triumphed over overwhelming odds to be a true inspiration to same-sex couples in the area. I caught up with Nikki, Mel and their daughter, Little Amelia, a loving family that is longing for marriage equality in Australia. We had a commitment ceremony back in 1999 here in Australia. Um, next year for our 20th year anniversary, we plan to go to Hawaii in July and make it legal. It's our wish, you know, I feel like crying. I would like um, our relationship to be recognized. I mean, I'm 64, I don't want to walk down the aisle in a wheelchair, you know, before the government will pass and accept and respect, you know, same-sex relationship. And I think it's important for our daughter to witness it too. Well, uh, the statistics show that around 72% of Australians support marriage equality, so that really is overwhelming support for the reform. I believe I found my soulmate. I just knew I had that connection. It was the first time that she entered the room. We encounter a lot of problems. We've been uh, discriminated in the lab. We have to uh, conceal it at first, and then it become open. And so uh, they really did everything to make life miserable for both of us. We were stripped of wealth. You know, we came from somebody to nobody. Because my mother thought by stripping me of my wealth and, you know, I would, um, I don't know, leave Mel. When Nikki I decided she would like to have a child, the only reason I accepted her decision is when she cried to me one night and she said to me, Mel, you're getting old and I would like if something happens I would like to have a piece of you to remember because Emilia is part of me and part of Nikki and we never conceal it to Emilia my brother my younger younger brother is the donor and um, uh, Nikki is the the, the, the one who carry 
Emilia. Mm -hmm. And both our names are on her birth certificate. <laughs> You know, Amelia is very open at school. Um, they all know that she has two mums, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, her teacher even um, brings in books and reads. Um, oh, male, and male teacher. Male teacher um, called, he read them a book called The King and King um, to, to teach the children that families, they come in all shapes and forms, you know. I think the local campaigning here in MacArthur um, will, will probably continue to be really strong from petition drives to barbecues to letterboxing on why marriage equality is important. People seem really engaged and keen to get really active in the campaign, a, a campaign which is about people and it's a campaign about winning over hearts and minds. I think um, the Prime Minister should make it legal because I don't think it matters who you love and who you marry. Here we are at the inaugural Smarter MacArthur Business Expo. Fantastic opportunity for local small businesses in the MacArthur area to get together and show their wares to the community. What we're trying to achieve here is to let businesses know that we really want to highlight them in the community. I think the biggest thing in, in this area at the moment is, um, is networking. Um, a lot of my revenue does come from uh, networking nowadays. Well, when you're first studying out, it's, um, it's a bit like there's a blanket up everywhere and you're just not sure where to start. Um, so it's finding new people to connect with. So I see the whole MacArthur community, business community, as really supporting one another and very tight-knit. A lot of people have this idea they start a business, open the front door and expect everybody to flock in their business. And anyone that's uh, done the hard yards knows it's not like that. You've actually got to go out there and do the work and promote yourself. The main concern that I have in working with small business owners is they're trying to do too much. They're trying to do a bit of everything. They have uh, skills in a particular area, but they end up in, end up doing sales, marketing, accounts, and so instead of focusing on the areas that are actually going to grow their business, they're, they're tied up and busy working on uh, these different areas. Always we have seen that U USA market is forefront when new technology comes up to generate more money for small business. But Australia market is normally two to three years behind it. Our Prime Minister has got uh, a business background himself, so small business and background. So I think that having people like that involved in the political area, they are very passionate about businesses out there and that just filters out into the states as well. Yeah, I think I really do see that. I really see things happening in the future for small business in regards to the government helping, yes. Shout, shout, shout it, shout it, shout it. A special shout out this week to Macquarie Fields public school student Keegan Sharma who inspired her neighbours and school friends to become a part of Australia's biggest morning tea that benefits the Cancer Council. Uh, last year I think it was, I saw an ad on TV about the biggest morning tea. It looked like a fun way to raise money for charity. Uh, I did it at home. Our goal for money was to raise about $500 and there was about 30 to 40 people here. Uh, la and last year we raised uh, over $600, almost $700. It's a good way to get everyone together and everyone has a chance to help out. Yeah, we'll try to do a bigger one next year. So I'll try to raise my goal as well. A definite shout out to George's Restaurant on Queen Street for encouraging local musicians to gig there every Saturday night. Good food, enjoyable ambience, you've got to check it out. I just did. C91.3, um, they were the ones that helped me get into the places like this. And it's so much fun. Uh, you get to realise what it's like being a musician who gets to play gig every week, um, and there's nothing better than that. There's so many musicians around um, MacArthur, um, we just needed a lot more venues.
that's all we have time for today, Brian. Well, if there's anyone out there you know who deserves a shout out, any stories that you know need to be told, happenings you want covered, issues of community concern, and any little ones doing great big things, flick us an email at info at thewizardofoursfunland.com or call 4626-7777. Remember, no story is too small to be told if it makes a difference to our community. Have, Have a great, great fortnight! fortnight.